And by the end of the movie, I knew it would be you, Michael. <laughs> by the end of the movie, where are we with these characters? All of them are dead. No, they're not all dead. <laughs> <laughs> Santino's dead. Santino's dead. The Don is dead. The Who's Don that? is the. Vito. Where's Michael, oh, okay. babe? Where's Michael? Stanley Kowalski, honey. Oh, Stanley Kowalski. God. Don Vito, d- the Don. Okay. It's Don. all Stanley Kowalski. Just stick with Stanley, Stanley Kowalski. Kowalski. Welcome to the Little Miss Movies Podcast, where two movie obsessed parents make their 11 year old watch movies she'd never watch otherwise. Welcome to season two, episode number one The Godfather. certain movies in this world that we are truly doing you a favor by having you watch them no and godfather part two is one of them no i like how you think you get a choice you don't get a choice i disagree with that and we are gonna watch elm street at some point no we're not yes we are no we're not yes welcome back (laughs) (laughs) to the little miss movies podcast show where uh as you can hear we've been uh, arguing. Are you really recording? <laughs> oh, I've been recording all this. <laughs> no, we're not. Stop for a second there, but we really. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, yes, we are. Oh, we are. So, uh, in the intervening uh, months <laughs> since our first season ended, uh, Gable has entered preteendom full on. She has blue hair. It was uh, a, and an we... attitude problem. No, Doc not. Martins. Doc Martins. Yeah, it's because they're she comfy. She steals my sweatshirts and wears them. I don't. I wear my own And occasionally ones the army jacket. And occasionally the army jacket. I wore that once because you told me to wear it because it was raining. Because you needed the and jacket. And she's incredibly argumentative. And very argumentative. No, we're not. <laughs> and so we decided. Randomly, I was going to say that. As we move into year 13 of the pandemic, uh, <laughs> year, oh. we're going to do some more episodes. Um, and uh, it just so happened we watched a little movie uh very recently called uh the godfather Woo! um before before Woo! we talk about it though i would like to point out what we have what we have learned in the intervening time of how to trick our daughter into watching um movies do we need to introduce ourselves or no oh yeah we can Are do we that just assuming people yeah, i don't know, <laughs> know <us>? people <laughs> hi know us. i'm josh it's i'm usually a... our friends who listen to this <laughs> listen hi i'm josh i'm a uh, writer of TV and comics and video games and other stuff. You write video games. I have, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriel. What? Very encouraging. Very what? encouraging. What? I have written video games. Yes, my love. Okay. I have done everything. Okay. I worked in radio. Worked on the internet. Okay. I served pizzas at one point. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I had two. I had two jobs where I served pizza. Okay. One of them. You all the free surge you could drink. I drank so much surge. Surge was amazing. I don't know what that means. Uh, and uh, it's I'm different from the place that paid you in Jamba Juice. Yeah, it was a different one. Right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can't imagine why I'm diabetic. I don't know in Jamba Juice, what did it? Um, and uh, I am Little Miss Movie's father. Uh, I'm I'm Christina. Um, I am a librarian and archivist, and I'm also a writer. Uh, I have a book on Jane Russell that came out. Um, last year in the middle of the year i've been out for a while now um i also write comic books amongst other things and what's uh what's that comic book you have coming out yeah today the, the day that we're recording this um it just got announced that an issue of idw's star trek comics focusing on alien races that i wrote is coming out um on the ferengi featuring quark and his mom ishka I is it bad that I don't know what any of that means besides Ferengi and Star Trek? Give us I mean, those gift. are those are like the Ferengi part's a pretty complicated word to know what it means. Oh, yeah, you're doing it's good. It's an alien race, but I know because you made me watch a few episodes and because oh. of The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. There you go. The Simpsons has taught me all I know. There you go. And uh, I'm the mother of Little Miss Movies. I'm Gable. I'm Little Miss Movies. I'm 11. I'm in sixth grade. That's right. You're, you're in middle school. You weren't in middle school before. Oh, that got a no, face. I don't like. I don't like middle school. You don't like middle school? No. Huh. You want to go back to kindergarten? Yeah. She wants to go back I to really online do. pandemic school. Yeah, of course I do. I got to sit at home. Mm. I got to start school at nine. Mm. In the early parts of. School. I also enjoyed that as I did not have to wake up in the morning, so it was really, <laughs> yeah, you did. really great. Yeah. I could stay. I, up. I got to go to school at twelve. I could stay up to my part. natural hour of like four a.m. and it didn't impact me in any way. It was fantastic. Yeah, I got to 
do that. And even then, I just had to wake up and say, "Gabe, we'll go to school." And then I went back to sleep, and it was fantastic. Those were the good old days. Yeah, they really weren't the good old days. (laughs) Yes, they were. Sure, millions of people died, but we got to stay home. Sure, do nothing. This. Sure, I got COVID, and it probably damaged me for life. But I did get to sleep a lot. Sleep in a lot. Did and sure, it created all sorts of social damage for our whole family. But we're fine. Everything's great. Anyways, wait, I didn't get to finish. Oh, look, oh sorry. sorry, sorry, I thought you were done. <laughs> no, we got to. I'm in middle school. Yeah, and then you really went on a little. You went on a little sad tear. I play video games. Yes, you do. Yes. What video game are you playing right now? I mean, not right I'm now. I'm playing multiple different video. What, games. what video game are you uh, obsessed with right now? Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still. Mm-hmm. Still. Still. Third it's my thir- yeah, but the first time I did it with you, and mm-hmm. now I'm, I'm, I'm in my defense, I was trying to get it to play a master mode, but it didn't work and it created a new save file and I didn't want to delete it, so I got I use it to play it. So therefore, you played for another two hundred hours. No, Sweet. I haven't really done anything on that. See, mm-hmm. I don't understand anything think you talk- guys are talking about. So what we've learned in the intervening time is the way to get Gable's heart uh, and trick her into watching movies is to find the corresponding Simpsons episode. Which I think we we, because we did Streetcar Named Desire for Same the podcast, way, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, yeah. So th- this has been working for a while now. Thank and you. so there was Thank a very Simpsons. there was a very good episode this season that was a whole Godfather's uh, riff. It was season thirty three. Season thirty three. Was that anyone... last year? No, it was this, this year. year. So it's, it's the current season. Do you have the going. episode number? Can you? Do you, you just can't you uh, whip that out? I think out? it's season thirty three. I want to say episode like ten. There you go. I think so. It's called this... I made. It's what was it called? I don't know. I think called. You're the one who has one. committed all of the Simpsons. One. I'm gonna to look memory. it up while you guys while you explain. But it is a very fat Tony centric. And I think it's is it God Joe Montana's like I think it's Joe Montana's last performance I believe because he passed away. Oh, I don't not know. Not too long afterwards. I'm not sure. Um, long may he rest. And his fantastic pizza restaurant, which oh, closed, which did close a number Taste of Chicago. years ago. Yeah. yeah, it closed a number. We of years ago. We miss you, Taste Chicago. We really do miss you, Chicago. Called- Oh, it was actually right. It is season 33, episode 10. It's called uh, A Maid Maggie. There you go. I was really close. I got the right episode number. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So, so we, uh... use this, we use the Simpsons episode <laughs> to really to hook her in. Yeah. And uh, we dragged her uh, in front of our giant 4K TV and put in uh, the 10-year-ago Blu-ray version of... It's older than that. Is it? Yeah, it's like 15 years old now at this point. um, Of the Godfather trilogy. And we made it all the way through the first one uh, and then stopped because, uh, spoiler, wait for the 4K because that uh, it's a terrible print. It's a really terrible, terrible print. (laughs) It's a very bad print. It's very bad. It's weird, actually, how bad the print is. Still a wonderful movie. Yeah, wonderful movie. Terrible print. So Gable... Uh, as is our format, I would be interested in hearing what you think the movie is about. It's about a family of mobsters <laughs> named the mm-hmm. Corleones, mm-hmm. and so and like their rise and fall, I guess. Is that right? That's yeah. Yeah, and then it's about one of them, Michael's rise to power as the Godfather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's the family's fall, it's the family's rise, and then that's coming later but so i got the rest of the plot right it was michael's rise to power yeah. yes there you go yeah okay and what did you think of it was this right. film that is regarded as one of the masterpieces of american cinema wow you're putting a lot of pressure on me to like this movie mm-hmm. and it was all right mm-hmm. <laughs> it was confusing i need you to explain it before and that's fine and we did pause a lot not as much as um the one that we watched that you made that there's like a ponies thing. The Maltese Falcon. Yes, <laughs> we did pause that. It was like every five seconds. You were also much younger. That was you were like probably eight or seven. We when still we paused it. it every like five seconds. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I actually think that's like one of the things with the Godfather is it is like, you know, it's a it's. I think he refers to it as a novel as a novel for film, um, because it's so dense and it's so like it is kind of impenetrable, um. Because he actually, one of the things about that movie, Francis Ford Coppola, who directed it and wrote the screenplay, he actually shared a screenplay credit with Mario Puzo, who wrote the novel, because he said that the movie was just the novel and his job adapting it was virtually nothing. Um, 
And so that is one of the things about that movie is it is just like, it is a thick, thick movie. Um, and I know like I've seen it multiple times and I still have those like, wait, what's who's going on? Wait, who's killing who now? What's okay. Which one's that? <laughs> wait, See, and I, who? and, and this was a movie I was fairly obsessed with in college and I watched it all the time and I read the book multiple times and read like makings of like, I have the book somewhere, I think probably in, in the studio. I'm not um, reading the Godfather book. No, I'm not going to make you read the Godfather book. Thank you. But having like read that book multiple times certainly helps me understand the movie and keep it all straight. Um, so I think that is a benefit. So I think I was the main one, you know, pausing and, but that's just because um, I just do understand the movie because I, you know, really immersed myself in it during my college years. Um. So what else? What else did you think, Gable? Give us some of your magic. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was all right. I like being able to understand the, like, how everybody Simpsons episodes. <laughs> this is the only number, reason. There are number, That's the only reason you're glad yes. you watched it. Yes. I mean, you yes. will. I think during the course of your life, there will be many horse head references that will pop up, and you will now know why. Horse head in the bed. Horse head in the bed. You don't want to wake funny. up with a horse head in the bed. That is not funny. We weren't saying it's funny. It's just saying it's people funny. use it all the time. It's just a fact of life that it shows up all the time. Sometimes you wake up and there's a horse head in your bed. That's not funny. And you just got to give Johnny Fontaine the part. Yep. It's still not funny. Uh, what did you think of Marlon Brando? So Stanley Kowalski from A Streetcar Named Desire is Vito Corleone in this. Would you have known that had we not? No. Okay. <laughs> no, so, not at all. So the crazy part is he didn't actually look like that. He aged. Really? They put him in age makeup. Oh, okay. And they put um, they made like a a prosthetic. I don't know. It's not really a prosthetic, but they made like a thing to put in his mouth. To, a dental, like, a dental piece. Because when yeah. he went, because by that time, like Brando was a very unpredictable, a very temperamental person. By that time, he was fairly um unemployable. So pe- pe- you know, um, producers just didn't want to cast him in things because he was such a wild card, and they didn't know if he that was, was going like, to make for the character. movies go over budget. Coppola really wanted him though, and so uh, they got him to do a screen test. Which by that time he had been around for so long, and you know, he, you know, had starting with Streetcar, like established himself as a legendary actor, and already had you know, he already had an Oscar for On the Waterfront. Um, so when he did the screen test, he wanted to transform himself, and so he actually took uh, tissues and stuffed them in his mouth to kind of give him that bulldog, those jowls, and then he took shoe polish and, like, slicked his hair back with shoe polish and then did this this um, screen test. And when the executives at Paramount, I think they didn't actually recognize it as Brando. Really? Mm-hmm. And were so impressed that um, they were able to convince Coppola was able to convince them to actually let him do the role. Is that the story of he showed up, Francis Ford Coppola showed up at his apartment in the middle of the night or early, early in the morning mm-hmm. and he was still essentially asleep and he got up and he just made him start. Cause they had to like had trick to, him. Yeah. Into, they like brought a camera and yeah, just started they, like, recording trick him into doing it. Yeah. And they just had him just to get him like as natural and without yeah. complaining and whining just yeah. to get him to, just to do the thing. Yeah. I think he still had to have cue cards like, you know, I don't know if it was like on Robert Duvall's head, yeah. but. He still remains. I feel we probably talked about it before, but the the stories of Marlon Brando in his later years um, remain the greatest stories in all of Hollywood. Um, everything from when he was in, there's a movie he was in that Frank Oz directed. Do you remember who Frank Oz is? No. He uh, is Miss Piggy. Yoda. The, oh, and yeah. Yoda. Okay. Um, and he became like a fairly well-known director, he directed Little Shop of Horrors, for example. Um, he directed a movie called The Score that starred Marlon Brando. And uh, Mar- Marlon would sit there when he got direction from Frank Oz and say, uh, cover your children's ears. Uh, what are you going to do? You gonna stick your hand up my ass and control me too? <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Just amazing. Um, he wouldn't wear pants because he didn't want to be shot from the waist down. So his solution was just not to wear pants on set. So they didn't have an option. He did own an island. He so did. It all, he owned it all an island. for him. He owned an island. Well, it's the story, also possibly apocryphal, but fantastic, is every year for like 20 years, he would fly in to Hollywood and have a meeting with a, like a round of executives and go around the city and he would sit down with them and he'd say, I want to do a TV show about my island. My island is filled with beautiful people and they survive. 
They fight for their living. And what we would do is we would make a show where we bring people in and they have to learn how to survive on the island. Isn't that? Then whoever wins, they get a prize. So Brando pitched Survivor? Pitched Survivor. Abby was like, you're an idiot. I'm like, what is this lunatic pitching to us? And he did it for like a decade. Wow. And then the show got made. And he's like, if only they want to listen to me. Yeah. One of my friends got into that show and she came over to my house and we watched like the first. I was very confused when I walked yeah. into the living room and saw the first episode of Survivor. Playing. How dare you? How dare you watch reality TV in this house that isn't Marlon baked Brando. food? Marlon Brando. Isn't baked food related. <laughs> yes. We only we only approve of food and Gordon Ramsay associated things. Gordon Ramsay is food. I know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He also did the hotels. There's a long where he did oh, the hotels. Oh yeah, he did the hotels. He had a monster truck that yeah. did stuff for some reason. Oh, was, was that called confusing. Monster Truck or something? It was, uh, 24 hours to, to hell. Oh, those. Tw- oh, we're okay, off topic you guys again. were totally off topic. Yeah, I don't care. Okay, next. <laughs> so, where are we? <laughs> I'm trying to shoot. Sit on the island of Doctor Moreau. So, the- <laughs> <laughs> so many stories. Oh, so do you have so questions so- for us? Do you have? Well, what, do you have any other? Of course, I have questions. Well, tell me. Well, tell me thoughts though. Like other than it's all right, can you give me give me something, kid? It's referenced in Zootopia. It's referenced in Zootopia. I only know it because I watched that movie so many times. Okay. It there's, is referenced in Zootopia. Yeah, there, like, there is a Godfather character in yeah, that. Yeah, I don't remember what his name is, but... Oh, he's like a, ro- he's like a, a rodent, mole though. Or yeah, he's a little mole. mole. Yeah. I think his name is Mr. Big. Yes. I remember this somehow. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I just remember that. So you have... Th- this movie made zero... In- this movie made no impression. This three-hour <laughs> That's cinematic the masterpiece That's made the no thing. impression on you. It was three hours. Three and hours it, and is it, too man, long. And it flies by. No, it doesn't. See, generally, I would agree with you on that. But man, does The Godfather fly no, by. No three hour Marvel movies on this Wait till podcast. the new Batman movie comes out. Because no. it is three hours long. No, I'm going to walk away and lock my room hmm. door. All right. Hmm. It's all right. Me um, one of the, like, so the thing about the movie for me that, like, it's the thing I always think of and I think what the movie is thought of is it is possibly, like, the best cast of all time like every single person in that cast even if they weren't at the time would go on to be you know award-winning beloved like best-in-class actors um what it like how did you feel about the cast like was there anybody in particular like who like stood out the yeah. performances santina was good yes santina. is that all you wanted to hear me say that's not all I wanted to hear you say, but I think when I I think when I gave birth to a child, I dreamed of them one day saying Santino was. <laughs> I love James Caan. He is probably he's my favorite actor of all time. Um, Question: Yes, is Bill Murray in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> you told me to always guess Bill Murray. No, Bill Murray's not in this movie. He's not. No. He okay. Is not. I don't know if we ever told you this, James Caan. Yeah. You know the other thing he's really well known for what? that you're gonna get pretty excited for. What? He is actually the one who financed one of your favorite directors' first movies. Steven Spielberg. No. Wes Anderson. Mm-hmm. Hmm. He paid. He put money into and stars in Wes Anderson's first movie, a movie called Bottle Rocket. Cool. So there you go. I mean, James Con. Go James Con. Cool. So okay. So tell me about well, what do you what about Santino? I mean, about the acting per- was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, they I think they did the character. I don't know what the character is supposed to be like. Mm-hmm. Was it you know with things like Harry Potter? Like I know what the characters, is, but like I think that that he did a good job on Santino's character, and he did a really good job acting. Mm-hmm. Well, Santino is supposed to be like very impulsive and very hot headed, and okay, yeah. So yeah. he's he's really he's he's the opposite of Michael. Yeah, so he did good. He did. He did amazing. I think he's very magnetic. He stood out. He, Sant- he does. Yeah. He, he does stand out. Santino does stand out. Absolutely. Does this mean we can, can watch Cinderella Liberty next, guys? No. <laughs> no. All right. I want to choose the next movie. <laughs> okay. So what else? Okay. So should I start with the questions about the plot or about the other thing? Oh, are you done giving us any impressions? Yeah. You don't even want to try to do a Marlon Brando impression? Or... No. No. Yeah. I'm not. It's a different kind what of impression. What did I ever do to make you treat me so disrespectful? No. No? Got nothing? No. Okay. All right. But honey, everybody has a Marlon Brando no. impersonation. Yeah, they really do. I mean, if it helps you at school, me and all my table mates tried to do the yes guy from The Simpsons. Yes! Yeah, that yeah. dude. 
Yeah. Almost okay. failed. He's not the yes guy from the well, Simpsons. One day, honey. one day, he's the guy us. from the Jack Benny show. No, yeah. he's the yes guy from the Simpsons. Oh my god, we have to watch Jack Benny ne- next. One day, maybe you all will sit around doing your Marlon Brando impersonations. No, we and won't. Then We're I'll feel a little bit the... better about the world. Okay, so which which question did you go like? ahead? Lay, whatever lay, you want, whatever you want, man, child, woman, <laughs> man, child, woman. Okay, where was the movie filmed? Oh, it was filmed in Long Island. Oh, it was okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, not all of it, but that's where the um, the Corleone family compound was an actual um. Yeah, that was an actual location on Long Island. Oh, I think it was up for sale, that, like within the last couple of years. No, but then they did. Yeah, so it, but it was filmed um, on the East Coast. You know, within okay. their yeah. Okay. Although, yes. but the but then the stuff like the um the house with the where the, um wolf the movie mogul where the horse's head i mean that that is oh. here in los angeles i think that i don't know if that house was on the market recently but lots and lots and lots of movies have been filmed at that house like that's actually like a, a, house. a house yeah it's a house it's a very yeah that's a house um, we will never live in well listen not with that attitude <laughs> not with that attitude was the movie based off of true events or was it just pure fiction um well it Mar- Mario Puzo who wrote the book um I mean he he did do research on did he do some I think you know kind of sorta but not really and I think it was okay. yeah I think he, well, he was a writer and I think the mob sells and so he wrote this book because he knew it would sell and it did and you know and kind of the same with Coppola like Coppola did the movie I don't know if that was a movie he ever dreamed of doing but he figured this is the movie I can do that sells and will allow me to make the movies I want to want to make so, I mean, there's probably, you know, probably stories and things that he's heard, but it's not based on. Like, specifically based on one thing. No. Okay. No, and there's, no. there's elements, like, through history that you start seeing. There's the, you know, like, probably the most famous of all the American gangsters is a guy named Al Capone. And he was sort of like Don Corleone. He was sort of like a rough and tumble guy who was, you know, in charge of everybody. But he always kept his, you know, he kept his nose clean and had, had all of his guys who did the work for him. There was he was involved in what was called the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, which is very similar to what happens uh, towards the end of the movie when they murder all their rivals all at once. You know, like there's there's bits and pieces of it that are sort of tied into what actually was going on in, you know, the early part of the 20th century. Um, and, you know, what's what's interesting about the movie is that it actually it's sort of like while it was drawing influences from the real world it then actually circled back and it became a thing that became cultural as well so like a lot of um italian americans started to sort of like both be offended by it because of the stereotype but a lot of italian american families also embraced it um, oh, and, and the they members saw it of, as like, like the crime families yeah. loved, and I think started yeah. to like kind of model themselves. So I think yeah, it was you know, art imitating life, imitating art, and then it even extended art like life beyond life. Italian, life. like beyond the Italian mob. It then started like if you look at how the Jewish mob or the Russian mob started to act after the movie came out, they also all sort of started to take on the same characteristics of the movie. When even though prior to that, that isn't how they were. Yeah, you know. So I mean, it did kind of glamorize it in a way, even though that wasn't Cop- you know Coppola wanted to tell a story of a family tragedy. Um, but it is very you know yes. alluring and intriguing. Yes. <laughs> Next. Um, going into the plot now. Mm-hmm. Why did they all shoot Santino again? Why did they shoot Santino? Yeah. Well, because um, because so he should, was. Should we give some background to that? I'm a, I don't know. I'm assuming most people that would listen to a podcast like this have seen The Godfather, so it's because um, because Don Corleone is is you know he's kind of out of commission after he's still alive but kind of out of commission. So Santino's running everything, and he's like such a hothead that um, kind of all hell's breaking loose, and so they they want to get rid of him. They'd rather okay. deal with with either Michael or whoever's left yeah. because Santino's a wild animal. Yeah. Okay. That and so sense. that's why they kill him. Okay. And then... Which is, it's a horrible scene, isn't it? Yeah. Like my introduction to this movie was, I think I was probably like 
seven or eight years old and my parents were watching it and I was just in my bedroom and I came out and decided to like sit down and watch it with them. And I walked in right at the scene where um, Carlo and Connie are in the fight. So like where Carlo is beating pregnant Connie. Yeah. Followed by Santino getting, you know, massacred. And then I got up and left the room. <laughs> it was years before I actually watched the movie again. So that was mm. that was actually pretty traumatic. So that is why I refrained from showing you this movie. Thank you. Uh, yeah, up until I, I recently. <laughs> Uh, what was the importance of the wedding scene? The way the movie opens? Yeah, like the opening scene. I think, you know, it is, it is as much as we love these characters, I mean, this this is a crime family. And so this is, you know, the, these are people that have done terrible, terrible things. But it's kind of setting the stage that it is a family, that it is a connected family, either by blood or by loyalty. Um, and that even though they can be monsters there's also this incredibly tight familial bond and there's tradition and it's just kind of um kind of setting the stage for what this world like all the contradictions of this world does that make sense yeah yeah like when you're you know and this is something it's funny when you're driving home today and i was talking to uncle tony we were actually yeah. talking about this for the for the book he's working on oh i wasn't listening um you're the worst you could have learned so much it was just <laughs> well, brilliant too bad right i there. wasn't listening um no, but look, one of the hardest parts, one of the hardest things to do in storytelling is to tell stories about bad people. Um, and the way that you do that is you give, you do two things. You make the bad person, you find the one thing about them that isn't, dis, you know, that is likable, right? You find the good part of them. And then you surround them with people who cherish them, people who love them and respect them, or people who are worse than them. And the movie does both of those things really, really quickly, right? So when you see, it does two things in the, those opening scenes, right? First of all, you see everybody is happy. Everyone is having this great time. The one person who isn't having a great time is Vito. And the reason that Vito isn't having a great time is because he's granting favors. So he, <laughs> he's the thing, it's he's, his worst nightmare. But it's also, it's also him being kind. Even though the things that he's doing aren't kind, the things that they're asking for aren't kind, he is being kind. He is showing love to the people around him, right? So we're yeah. seeing like this is the sacrifice he makes because they are family. They are part of his life, you know, of his of his life story. They're part of who he is. Um, and then in the midst of all of that, right, you have two other things going on. One is you have the FBI guys who are taking pictures of all the license plates. Yeah. And even though they're the good guys, in you any them. other story, they're the good guys. By having them do it at a wedding and by having uh, by having uh, Santino show up and essentially confront them about it and say, how dare you? Like, how dare you walk into a sacred place and do this? What they're doing is they're pointing out to you, like, we're not the bad guys. We're just having a wedding. Yeah. We're just and showing also, family. And, and I love. love how like Santino um breaks the camera but then like throws the money on the ground <laughs> so they yeah. could replace the camera, you know. <laughs> That's funny. So it's it's literally sort of like setting what they're doing is they're setting your expectation. And they're explaining to you this is what good means in the movie that we're about to watch. This is what family means. This is what we do. Cuz that same in within those same scenes, that's when Santino runs off with a woman who isn't his wife. And the two of them are upstairs playing with each other, right? But it doesn't like it doesn't actually dawn on you. I think when you're watching it, it feels it's played in such a way that it doesn't feel like lascivious. It feels like it's just who he is. He's just off. He's just off messing just, around. Yeah. You know, even though what he's doing is like literally not just not just a sin religiously, not just wrong morally, but like super gross at a wedding. <laughs> like it's just the wrong thing to be doing. But the thing is, is he's so kind of like catch as catch can and we just saw him do this sort of noble thing that you're kind of like yeah it's cool like look at him being cool what that all gets you and what like you sort of earn as a storyteller with that is you become an accomplice right the, your audience becomes an accomplice to the characters so you get trapped with them because you just instantly i think just love these characters you know, and I, and one of the, the wonderful, like, unscripted things at the beginning, I don't know if you noticed, when they pull back and show Vito for the first time and he's sitting in that chair, he's holding a cat. 
So yeah. he's, you know, he's sitting there, you know, <laughs> granting these favors the while he's, you know, while he's like playing with this cat. Um, Which wasn't, it was unscripted. That was it, was, unscripted. It, was a, it was just a cat they found, right? Yeah. It was like a cat that just was hanging out. It was a cat out. that was around, yeah. Very strange. Yeah, that he picked it up. The cat just started, just sat on his lap and purred so loud. I think they had to re-record some of his dialogue later. <laughs> okay. And I have two more questions. Okay. Okay, the, those are all like my script ones, like in the movie ones. Why is this movie referenced in The Simpsons so much, as well as other things? And where else is it referenced? I mean, it's it's like it's referenced. I can't. I it's referenced. So it was a huge hit. Like it was the book was a huge hit, and the movie was just a huge, huge, huge hit. And like the imagery of the horse's head, and I'm gonna make an offer he can't refuse. Like all of that just kind of entered like the pop culture conscience like immediately after this movie was released. Yeah, like it. It really. It's interesting because he like Francis Ford Coppola had has a very strange career. He made a bunch of movies in a row that are all like masterpiece classics, just movies that are like huge influences over the rest of film and then sort of didn't. And then for the rest of his career, just kind of made movies. But there was this period of time around the Godfather when he was making these movies that really like spoke to our, our country, our times and who we were. And I think that thing like, do you know, I don't know if we talked about this, but do you know who his, one of his best friends was? Who? George Lucas. The Star Wars guy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, He's the Star, Star Wars, Wars guy. guy. Yeah. Like, so they were buddies. They went to school, because they, they went to school. They went to USC together, right? I think, pretty sure. I, mean, that look. I think so. They were all buddies. They were all yeah. friends with each other. They were all involved with each other. They were all, like, getting to know each other. These guys all sort of, they came from the same soup. And so even though The Godfather is incredibly different from Star Wars, it has sort of the same language, you know? Like, you can see Han Solo in Santino, right? In Sunny. Can you, though? No, you can. Think about what Han Solo does. What's the first thing we see Han do in the original, in New Hope? Isn't he... Isn't he like smuggling the? He kills Greedo. Oh, he's having a conversation he with a guy who he he's having a conversation with a guy who he essentially ripped off, and instead of dealing with it honorably, he shoots him. <laughs> he kills him under the table. Like that's the first way we meet him, and we love him for it because he's such a like he's such a he's such a cad. You know, that's and it's again, it's really similar to how we meet. It's how we, you know, how we meet uh, Sonny and and Godfather. There's a language that those guys spoke that was built on all of the movies that came before. Um, And Scorsese is the other one, but you don't know Scorsese. We haven't shown you. Uh, Just to interject, so Coppola went to UCLA, Mm. but but concurrently. Yeah. And so they. um, Because and De Palma, too. Like De Palma was with them. Mm -hmm. They were all buddies. Yeah. It's crazy. Like there was a time when all these guys who would go on to be like the great the great filmmakers of the 70s were all best friends and all hanging out and all talking to each other. And it was just sort of their life was all intertwined. And I think that's part of why these movies in particular all feel timeless, you know, is because they were all aiming for the same thing like this movie. And I think also why you like it so much, Chrissy, is. It's to me for a why you like it, so much, Chrissy, like it so much is that it feels like the gangster movies of the 30s yeah like it's it's a grander sort of more grounded version of them but it very much has its its legs in those classic movies that those guys were obsessed with yeah you know and that language of those movies is what has carried on throughout time and just been recycled and reused even like i know you're not crazy about Scar seventy Scarface or eighty Scarface, eighty three Scarface, eighty three Scarface. No, I'm not. But eighty three Scarface is the same thing. Like mm-hmm. it's really playing on that same stuff. It's changed. It changes it up for what the eighties were and what the seventies were, but it's also using that same language and sort of like building on that same feel. Yeah. And he says the say hello to my little friend. <laughs> We will not be watching that movie for the podcast. But how is she going to know what it no. means when on care. The Simpsons no. everybody says, say hello to my little friend? No. 
But to go back to your point, no, the, the, the movie was so huge. It was such a huge hit that it, it, it had no choice but to, you know, kind of be referenced um, in so many other places. Horse head all the time. You're going to see the horse head thing all the time. Next. Okay, so this is the final question. So it's fitting that's about the sequels. Oh, yeah. Would sequels considered as popular as the original? I think that, well, the second one was. Yeah, the second one. I mean, the second one is re- regarded, I think, more highly regarded than the first. The first I don't like it as much just because I love James Conn and he, he's in it for like a hot second in part two. Hello. Um, it runs away. Kind of. He's a ghost. He gives them a thumbs up <laughs> yeah. at the end. It's weird. Really? <laughs> no. He does not do that. I wish there was a video so that you could see that I just gave a ghostly no, thumbs up. He, but... he does not do that. Um, so yeah, so the, the the second one is incredibly highly regarded. Um, the third one was highly anticipated and not as highly regarded as the first two. Okay. It's very diplomatic. polite. It's very diplomatic. <laughs> he is very diplomatic. Of that. The third one uh, is one of those movies that no matter what it was going to be, nobody was going to like it. It was impossible to follow up especially because it took what like 15 15 years in between 10 years in between uh, part two came out in 74 and that one came out i think in 89 or 90 yeah. Yeah. so like it was it was far enough removed you know the actors had all you know aged and all that time and changed and it just doesn't have the magic and again like coppola for how brilliant he was back then like by the late 80s he wasn't the same guy he just wasn't the same director anymore yeah you know yeah, that was my final question. That was your final question. Yes. Okay. Um, one of the things, yeah, because I said like I, you know, I I had read the book, you know, multiple times, and there are little, there's like little touches that are in the movie that you'd never know. One of my favorites is um, when Michael's in Sicily, he always has like a handkerchief with him, and is always kind of dabbing his nose, and that is because when he got um hit and he got struck by um mccluskey captain mccluskey and his jaw was broke it like kind of like screwed up his nas- nasal passages and so his nose would always run mm. and that is not explained in the movie at all but i like that they kept in you know that that the little so, yeah there's there's lots of those little details that they maintained from the book even if they don't explain them um which i like I think, look, I think the thing about it, Gable, and also part of why it's it's stood the test of time is that it is a movie that benefits from multiple viewings. And it's going to be a movie that you like it or not, you're going to end up seeing multiple times over the course of your life. And it'll change as you get older. And as you see it, it changes and becomes a different movie each time. It does. Because again, like I watched this movie when I was in my 20s, I watched it at least once a year, at least once a year. Um, That's too much. Oh God, I I just loved it so much, and I actually hadn't. I think the last time I watched it was when this DVD set came out, and that was, gosh, back when we were in Glendale, and I hadn't for whatever reason, um, I just hadn't watched it, and I was a little bit afraid to because I thought, oh God, what if this movie is overrated, and what if, and and I love it just as much, but this was the first time I ever watched it as a parent. And the scene where they bring Santino's body to the Undertaker, <laughs> Brando looks, you look how they mess look at my boy. Like, <laughs> I started bawling. Like, I don't know that I ever, like, bawled <laughs> at that part. Um, but was it, it because was, of me or was yes. it because of my cousin named Santino? <laughs> we do have a cousin named Santino. Yeah, and I'm pretty exactly. sure. Exactly. I think my sister did do it. No, On purpose. <laughs> this was my first time watching this movie as a parent. And so it actually was a very, you know, so I could empathize with um, Vita Corleone much more and just kind of that that remorse. Also, that Michael ended up going down the path that he did. Um, So, yeah, I think, you know, there are so many movies that at different points in your life will have different meanings. And this this is certainly one of them. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) So yeah. Gable, I think we. Uh, oh, but the- I want to oh, say. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, just to kind of put a fine point. So we watched this movie. Um, I think during the holiday break. We watched like a few days before I went back to school. And it was the day where I think we all woke up at like ten or eleven. We like stayed in our pajamas and like watched The Godfather during the day. 
And I think that was the happiest I have been <laughs> since like March of 2020. Um, the so, the hap- oh, like no. this movie just, this movie like brings me a, a tr- for whatever reason, brings me a tremendous amount of, of comfort. Um, and it was just, you know, again, like back when I was in my twenties, I would like sit in my pajamas during the day watching the Godfather. And so it, maybe you didn't catch it but it was very meaningful for me to like share that experience with you and i hope one day you'll appreciate it one day i'm okay. gonna i'm gonna feel like that when we watch texas chainsaw <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's, maybe when i'm one in like day. my 20s let me, maybe. that day may never come let me correct that when we watch texas chainsaw 2 no, no. Oh, Leatherface! You scratched my dome. No, oh, we're not. Honey, what? So oh, it's amazing, honey. No. It's a comedy. It's no. a broad comedy. No. It's delightful. No. Delightful. No. So, Gable. Uh, I mean, it, does it, you now understand the Funko Pops we have better of the Corleone family. She is nope. completely unimpressed. Nope. Okay. Gable, <laughs> it's time for what we do every time. We Aside get- from being disappointed in our apparently terrible job raising you based on your, your movie taste. <laughs> based on my Planet of the Apes movie taste? It's ridiculous. No. I forgot. Until you said it right then, <laughs> Wait, I you forgot. you like Planet of the Apes? No. no. I don't like no, it. It's stupid. Oh, it's stupid. It is stupid. I think, it's I, think stupid. I blocked it out. Parents don't listen. Just tell it your kids. Stupid. How did how did How did we? Stop how listening. Did we, listen to me. How did we <laughs> create this child with such a lack of... Oh. And that was it's overtaking one. my video. And by games. the way, again, Simpsons did not do the trick on that one because I, the doctor the <laughs> stop the plane of the apes. I want to stop the plane of the apes. I, I want to get, get off. off. Has got to be like the best, best teaser for that movie ever. It is. I hate every ape I see <laughs> from chimpanzee Jumanji. to chimpanzee. Yes, <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. So Gable, as we do every time, uh, would you recommend this movie to your friends or acquaintances? Maybe like. In a few years, really? Yeah. Why? Because I think everyone would probably understand it a bit more. Okay, so it's just not necessarily because it was too graphic, but no, but just, like, it was a little bit hard under- to yeah. follow. Okay. Yeah, I think That's if fair. I think if you waited a few more years, it probably would have impacted me. It impacted me more. Okay, I that's probably fair. understood it a lot more. Okay. So on a scale of whatever, one to five. Sure. Gable smiles. Gable yeah. smiles. <laughs> You it's created a terrible that. system we've fallen into. You created that. Uh, one it's not being my fault. one being uh, the worst. Five being Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> I mean the best. I'm sorry. No, no sorry. Um, <laughs> no, sorry. No, you, I think you mean the Simpsons movie slash Jaws. Um, that's ridiculous. The Simpsons. Sorry, the movie. Simpsons movie is now on the same level as Jaws. That's what yes. just happened there. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this is absurd. I'm sorry. That's just that can't stand. You need to leave. Okay. I'm sorry. Bye. You need to go find somewhere else to live now. Okay. So if anyone is interested in adopting a child, she's very gifted in every way except for movie taste. And uh, we'll have her available for you. Uh, we'll pick a corner and just kick her out the car. Hey! Gable, on a scale of one to five, five being the best, one being the worst, how did you feel about your first viewing of The Godfather? First viewing, I like that. <laughs> Go ahead. You're going to be mad at me if I give it anything give but it. a five. No, give it whatever you think. It doesn't mean you're correct, but give it whatever you want. What the heck? It's my opinion. You can't yes, get mad. Yes, please. She, she just said that. Yes, she please. She just said, pick whatever you want. Holy crap. What? Pick it. Um, 4.3927. But that means you really liked it, and you said you didn't really like it. Oh, I meant 3.9. <laughs> so you, like, didn't like it? I meant three point okay, eight here, nine okay. seven. Okay. Four. Did you think it was a good movie? Yes. Cause you know, I will agree Rush is a good band. I don't like them. So would you say that much feels like personal. Rush? That feels like that feels like <laughs> a, a personal, personal attack. A personal attack over here. So I think there is like if the movie is good, is different from if it suits your personal taste. Yeah. So did you think this was a good movie? Like in all yeah. honesty. Like in terms of how the story and construction and acting and everything. Yeah. Mise en scène. Okay. The mise en scène. Then, then what would you give it in Gable Smiles for, is it a good movie? 4.5. Okay. Seven, thank you. Nine, six. I'll take it. Three, two. Fine. Seven. Lovely. Nine, And one, what five. would you give it in terms of your actual enjoyment? 3.57965. Okay. All right. 
very specific. It is very specific. <laughs> yes, it is. Right. And three fourths. Okay. Mm. That that's the that's the rating. Okay. And there you have it. Uh what movie we decide before we said a movie earlier that oh, we said no. we're gonna make her watch and I can't remember what it is. Was it Nightmare on Elm Street? No. I like Nightmare on Elm Street. No, oh I'm leaving if we do Nightmare on Elm Street. It's so Why? Oh good. I don't wanna watch Nightmare Dude, on Elm Street. Dude, you watched Halloween. You like willingly yeah. watched it. Not just Hall- watched it, liked it enough that now you're like super into it. Like Halloween. And you were oh, like, so you wore funny. my Halloween sweatshirt because oh, you wanted yeah, to wear yeah. it like to a Christmas party. Yeah, yeah. Vivi was the only one who understood. You wore what it to a Christmas party. And Halloween is totally scarier than Nightmare on Elm Street. No, it's not. You have Freddy's seen... funny. That's the Freddy's whole point. Like, no, he's absurd. Not. He is. He cracks jokes. The episode of Simpsons that they did based on that is scary. You're ridiculous. Yes, the one with the groundskeeper Willie? Yes. It's stupid, but also oh. a bit scary. Oh, honey, Elm Street's so good. No. Though. It's no. so good. No. Was that the one? No. Um, I do feel like it was a different movie, though. Was no. it a different movie? I don't movie? remember what it was. Um, no. Oh, we talked about Hedwig. That was the other oh, one. Hedwig. Oh, Hedwig. Yeah, Hedwig. Oh, yeah, we could do Hedwig. I like Hedwig. Gable, how do you feel about that? Better than Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh. Did we tell you that Hedwig is also a horror movie? It's not. Hmm. No, it's not. It's not. Hmm. It's not for a fact, I've walked on you guys watching it, but... You've walked on us, <laughs> walked in on us watching Hedwig. It's horrible. <laughs> Make it sound so tawdry. <laughs> <laughs> no, so what would you guys do when you were watching? And Dad was like watching Open Ways. Yeah, we've listened something. to the soundtrack a lot. Yeah, I know, the sound- uh, I know, maybe part- I know parts Hedwig. of the soundtrack. I really want to do Elm Street, though, kid. No. I really want to share this no. movie with you because I if love I it so much. If I do Elm Street, then I'm making you guys watch a movie. And we're doing all this I think we can make. I think we can make that deal. Really? Yeah, we can make that deal. Really? Yeah. You would not let me do it for my birthday? I'll do it as bribery to watch Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, but not the Simpsons not movie. Not the Simpsons movie. We're not discussing the Simpsons movie. Oh, God, we've seen the Simpsons movie so much. You've seen we can it three do, times. Like, we can do Encanto. We can do that. Yeah, I'm down for doing that. Or uh, Luca. What? Which You're we not doing lot. that? Uh, I'm saying I'm, I'm down for doing Encanto. You want to do Encanto? Yeah. Did we do Halloween? Did we actually talk yeah, about it? Yeah, we did. I think we did. I don't think so. I think we did Halloween 3. I don't think we ever actually... No. I think oh, we, we never watched... actually did yeah. Halloween? <laughs> We can do it for we the next Halloween. Like oh, yes, we watched it during our extended break. Yeah. We could do it during the next Halloween. Hmm. Maybe instead we can show you Halloween 4 and then tell you about the haunted house we went to, which very Studios? faithfully recreated all of Halloween 4. That's, it is a delight. It was wonderful. Truly really great. They got so many Donald Pleasances. It was really, where do they get all those guys? I don't know. <laughs> I don't need to know. I, I don't want to I, do, I just need to experience it. I just don't want to She's know. pure evil. Evil. <laughs> You're missing Perfect. out, kid. You're missing I'm out. I'm okay. Oh, so we're agreed that we can watch it on Elm Street? Right yeah, now. We can, no. Yeah. Why no. not right yeah. now? No. Yeah. Wrap this up, babe. Yep. Watch it on Elm Street. No. Dude, we got the studio all set up. We can just no. go watch it and then record no. the episode tomorrow. No. Uh, yep. We're doing no. it. Cool. No, we're not. Ladies no. and gentlemen, we will see you back here no. in a, we? a week. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, yes. Are we back to weeklies? I don't know. We're going to we? try. We're doing I'm... my movie next, and we'll do Nightmare. No, we're going to do Nightmare right now. Nightmare no, first. Yep. Nightmare right now. No, my... no. Nightmare now. No, then I'm quoting this podcast, and we're doing Nightmare now. We're going to get a different kid. Can we get <laughs> one of the kids from the Girl Scout troop who would want to do Do you want Vivi? Vivi likes horror stuff. Maybe one of the kids from the Girl Scout troop would watch mm-hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street with us. B would probably watch it. B would probably B watch, would it. watch it. Mm-hmm. You can have Vivi if you want. B would watch it. That's mm-hmm. it. We are adopting B for this podcast. There you go. Where am I going to go? I don't know. Am I just going to go and sleep over at Kiki's house? Sure. I have no idea. Just chill there for Sweet. a minute. Sweet. Go in the crate. Sweet. Go we got it all figured crate. out. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you back here in one or two weeks. We're not sure yet. But it'll um, be longer than six months. Right? It will be shorter than six months. I'm sorry, shorter than six it'll months. It'll be longer than six months. It'll be six months on one day. Say, Gable, say, uh, say goodnight, Gable. See you next time. No, you're supposed to say goodnight. No. Goodnight, goodnight, Gable. Gable. No. Oy vey. That's to say goodnight, Gable. See you guys next time. She's a tween. No. Bye. The Little Miss Movies Podcast is hosted by Christina Rice, Gable Fialkov, and me, Josh Fialkov. We're recorded, mixed, and produced in North Hollywood, California. Series art by Gabo. Episode art by Gable Fialkov. Theme song by me, Josh Fialkov. All contents copyright 2022, Valoria Shines, Inc. Visit us online for more at littlemissmovies.com.
Like that. I can just do like a different version of it. I can just do like a different version of the song. <laughs> 